one of the most important characteristics you have to have as a fighter comes in two forms. There's the physical and mental resilience that you have to have in an actual fight. And a lot of that's to do with, you know, there's a possibility that I will firstly lose and maybe get hurt, and trying to fight that sensation for flight. There's the resilience that when you get hurt in that match, you have to deal with that. Everybody in their career will get hurt, and they will, at that exact point in time, have a choice and that is to let that moment get the better of them and fold or fight through that pain. Every fighter faces that choice. Ready? Go! When you've done 100, you're just going to go into tech get up. Right to say. From week one till two, I already noticed they're like getting a little bit more comfortable with each other and the surroundings are becoming a little bit more familiar. Three, two, one, sprawl. Go, down on the ground. Hips down, stand up, hands in front of your face. Yeah, it's interesting that even over a week, you see like quite a drastic change in their confidence and attitude. Stay up high, stay up high. But then as they learn the techniques and stuff and they get to know each other just a little bit more, that apprehensiveness gets replaced with enthusiasm and you can see they're kind of a little bit excited to get into it. Chris, you got one minute. Woo! On your bum, legs behind you. Knees come in and out. Once Warrior has been pretty full on, but the body's slowly getting used to it. Should be doing this out to the letterbox. I joined Wimps Warrior because I'd had to have some time off from training due to injuries. So I'd put on quite a bit of weight and I really needed some motivation to get back into the gym. Go, go, go. It wasn't about the cage fight at the end, it was just about that group training and having a reason to get up at 5 a.m you know, to go to the gym. And one of the benefits was, you know, I knew I would lose that weight. Oh, side control escapes. Go, 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 quickly, quickly. I feel pretty good. I mean, it's pretty tough. I'm waking up at, you know, 4.30 in the morning. Let's go, come on, put the knee in. But you gotta do what you gotta do and I'll make us stronger at the end of the day. Before training, I'd say like, I'm coming in and I'm crazy tired, you know, we're getting up at some ungodly hour. Come on, feel some fatigue in your legs. Come on. But how I feel after training? 20 seconds, easy money, come on. Physically, I feel great, and also mentally, I feel great as well, because you're kick-starting your day with like, exercise, gets the blood pumping, like dopamine flowing. Like, it hits the soul, you know what I mean? I'm getting up at 4.30 in the morning to get here on time it has been hard, but overcoming my fear of doing something that I'm not comfortable with has probably been the hardest bit. I was shit scared to be honest, but it's good. I really like it. I'm still here and I plan to be here for the weeks to come. I'm uh, born and bred Westies, grew up in Massey. I'm 46. I actually turned 47 just after the fight. I work at this place called Wapadata Trust. I think during COVID, everyone um, sort of retreated into themselves a bit. I felt like I was in a bit of a slump physically. Needed to do something really different. And then saw the opportunity to do something very different with myself. Everyone thinks, oh, I might like to do that, but they never actually do anything with it. So it was actually Whip to Warrior that was the catalyst that thought, OK, I might as well just give it a go. And I like physical challenges because actually towards the end of them, they become a mental challenge. At home with my kids, they're like, what did you do today, Mum? What did you learn today, Mum? You know, and then we practice stuff. And I feel like if my kids can see me doing some random out of it stuff, they'll think, OK, I'm going to give anything a go. I'm going to do something like my mother did, maybe. Although we're breaking it down in stages to learn it, 
That's not how it actually happens. It, the, each stage flows onto the next one really, really fast. I can't take him down from up here. Drop my level. Step in. This foot is going to the middle of his feet. Never put your head down, yeah? Always put your head up, so I'm looking up the whole time. My hands go behind the knee. Now this foot needs to catch up to the other foot, so they're in line. Now my head's gonna push him, so this hand is down here. Okay, jog around here in a circle, please. Get up off your asses. It's time to work. My name's Susan Wong. I'm 35 years old and I'm a photographer. The reason I got into it is to challenge myself, just to do something a bit different. My youngest child started school this year, so I thought this is my moment to do something for me. And it's totally outside of my comfort zone and outside of what my personality is like. <laughs> run, run, run. Cool. I haven't done much sport in the past, though I did used to do ballroom and Latin dancing. Step, step. Step. Pull. In some ways, this isn't too different because you're in someone's personal space. It's kind of to and fro with the dance moves. Obviously, a lot more aggression in there. <laughs> OK, circle up, guys, circle up. As per usual, the normal sequence of events is you do it. I explain it perfectly. You go away and do it imperfectly. Then we come back, and then we kind of pick up the holes. I just take everything as a novice, you know, and so I'm really slow on it. But I think that's what keeps me alert, because nothing really comes naturally for me. i really got to work at it. What a trip to me to the fighting scene was fear, actually. <laughs> So I've done everything, diving, paragliding, you name it. Then I came across mixed martial arts, which was only like a couple of years ago. <laughs> Popped my shoulder on the first Wimps of Warriors, literally three days before it. So this is um, third time lucky for me, so fingers crossed. Push it in, brother, push it in. I'm just in that real novice mode, eh? so everything's learning. Yeah, and that's how I approach it, so. I just come in uh, each day with a clear head, clear mind, clear heart, and I feel good. I want to get hit in the face, you know? <laughs> Bring this right hand back, look. Bum, bum. I always wanted to fight. You going for fight of the night bonus? brought up in South Auckland or siblings that we used to just brawl like till one's out so yeah I was missing it. <laughs> I think I've been through everything that's designed to destroy me. At school I used to get a group of girls waiting for me to jump me. I woke up in hospital a lot and I was out of home at a really young age. No help, no support whatsoever, just me and myself. Help me to grow fast. All the time, I get that thought, like, why was I born? Like, what's my purpose? You know, you got two choices. You either sit there and feel sorry for yourself and abuse yourself, or you go and fight day by day. Like, it's up to you, it's the choices you make, you know? I signed up for the military. I wanted a career, like something I never understood as a kid. I was counselling youth, people that went sent to the military to get in tune between 18 and 25. I did a bit of MMA on the side. It's my way of like standing up for myself, protecting myself, you know? And at CKB, like, every day I wake up, I'm like, yes, I got training. My goal is to make you see. That's my goal.
We're four weeks into the Winter Warrior program now. Their rate of learning is exponential at the moment. Week to week, they're getting markedly better, which is, which is real pleasing. It's a process of feeding someone into contact. You can't just lump everything on them. You've got to progress them step by step, as opposed to just lumping it on them and saying, okay, you guys start, start punching each other. <laughs> I first watched UFC years and years ago, many moons ago, and thought, wow, you know, what is this? Like, in a cage, small gloves, being able to do everything. I didn't have Sky at the time, so I used to have to go up to a mate's house. Because I come from a small village, which is about five kilometres outside the nearest town, and there was only like one, couple of karate clubs, couple of taekwondo clubs, so I done a bit of taekwondo as a kid. I wanted to smash pads and knee things, you know? I started doing kickboxing, Muay Thai and stuff. But it wasn't really until I came to New Zealand and I walked into City Kickboxing. They had the big cage, mats, padded walls, big ring, and I was just like, this is it, you know? Eugene's like, and he's very technical about what he's doing. And What's your space? What's your space? When you put what he's teaching you in the practice, it worked. Yeah, that's it. You see what this, the gym is achieving, not just in the UFC, but PFL and all the boys that are fighting in Australia and New Zealand and stuff. So if all these guys are doing exactly what he's telling them to do and bringing home goals, it gives you, obviously, a bit more encouragement. Don't hesitate, you've got to do it. It's part of life now. Is your full name, brother? Johnson Crawford. Johnson Crawford. 92, flat. My name's Johnson Crawford, 24 years old, from a little town called Paraparauma on the Kapiti Coast down in Wellington. I'm a barber by trade. I've been cutting hair since I was about 16. Whaka papa back to Tolaga Bay, Ngāti Pirau, Te Aitanga Hauti, and Wenga Tautari, Pohara. I've absolutely had uh, anger issues in my life. I'm ginger, you get bullied like there's no tomorrow just because of the colour of your hair. So I was just an angry little kid, always felt like I had to prove myself. Even to this day, still feel like I've got to walk around with my, you know, chest out. My main reason for coming to Winter Warrior was to learn how to control myself again, control my own thoughts, control my anger, but also have some vigorous exercise in there to take a lot of that extra stress, a lot of that extra anger out. Wrong arm. I joined up with CKB in November. Um, met Eugene and I was just like, hey, I just want to fight. I want something different. This time goes to the hamstring. I did strongman. Just a lot of lifting, boulders, 10 ton trap pulling and running. <laughs> New Zealand's strongest woman, 2020, 20. 19. No, right arm to the outside of your thigh. I think transitioning from strong end to this sport, my feet is used to being both down. So when we come to punching, like my whole balance is moving forward or I lose balance so easy, but on the ground it's perfect. I've done quite a few sports over my life, but I have been into martial arts for quite some time. I started as a teenager doing kickboxing. I actually picked it up because I wanted to protect myself from my brother. Ironically, he also picked it up. I'm just making an uh, assumption here that you're an OK kicker because your brother's an OK kicker. So my brother is Lawrence Liu. He's an up-and-coming amateur fighter being competitive with my brother helps me get me out of bed. I know he's preparing for fights and I've seen how he prepares for fights as well. He's got the work ethic of an ox. So I want to replicate that and I want to be kind of be that as well. It's a little bit better. Bit rusty to be honest.
Okay, just be careful of the space. And this becomes our first lesson in looking after our training partners. Gloria is much, much stronger than me. Did she throw me around and bully me? She did not. She gave me enough resistance where I can get a good work in, but not where she didn't absolutely kill me because she's way stronger than me, okay? Some of you are gonna have to do that, right? Martial arts wise, I've done a bit of jujitsu and kickboxing. This foot is between your legs. So then this foot comes up. And the whole family is into it. It's a bit of a family affair. My family's involvement with martial arts probably started with um, my husband and I going to places like the YMCA in town to watch kickboxing shows. And then we'd come home and we'd practice with each other in the living room. Yeah, the fighting and the competition, um, I really do that because of my kids. My husband tried to get them into Kung Fu because he also taught Kung Fu. He's got a black belt in Wushu, Kung Fu, but they wouldn't really listen to him. So, yeah, I started training at uh, the CKB. You know, I want to be an inspiration to them and to show them if they can see me doing it, their mum, you know, on the mats, training, working towards something I really want to do well in, then they can do the same, and not only in martial arts, but in anything. Knees, ears, knees, ears, toes, knees, ears, toes, toes. Sprawl, sprawl. I'm a rugby man, so I've been playing rugby my whole life. All I know is how to tackle. So I've always loved combat sports. And go. Like it's quite hard going from a team scenario to a singular person sport, so to speak. When you've got a team, you've got other people to rely on, and everyone else has their job in there. When you step into a cage and it's just you and one other guy, you are the team. So it'll be a bit different knowing that I don't have anyone but myself to back me up. As a coach, one of my jobs is to stand up and represent my fighters. The same way my fighters are representing New Zealand every time they get in the cage. Hello, Ooh. hello, hello, hello. The UFC called me up and said, hey, how's it going, Eugene? Hey, we're just going to change that symbol on your sleeves that you wear out to battle. The UFC is stopping us from using the silver fern because they've been contacted by the All Blacks and asked not to use it because it's been trademarked. No one owns that symbol. Everybody who represents our country internationally earns the right to wear that symbol. It's a symbol of national pride and national importance. This is a picture of the great Richie McCaw, representing our country like he does, like he has for all those tests as captain. Now look, here's some of our guys doing the same thing, being proud, of our country, proud to represent our country. The All Blacks need to contact me. If we're in some sort of breach, then come and contact me and talk it out with us and we'll figure this out. But we've done our duty to earn the right to represent that silver firm. Send your feet. Send your feet. Yeah. Oh, I've been touch. I've done bodybuilding. I've done a lot of different things. So, like, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Yeah. I've probably learned that MMA is a very technical sport, and it's actually more in your head. You've got to understand how you defend yourself, how you attack. It is harder for the brain to understand as opposed to what you think it's just punching and rolling around on the ground. I'm from Ngāti Whātua, Tamaki Makaura, Auckland. So um, this whare is right in our rohi, so it's important for us as uri to 
participate in total events like this, and the boys have obviously been up to our marae. Quickly, quickly, quickly! I'm a kayako, I'm an educator, and um, I'm all for going to the source of um, any knowledge in Mātauranga, and right now these guys are at the top of the world, so I just feel really blessed and privileged there. Time! Yeah, I'm from Tamaki Makaurau, Auckland. Ko ngā maunga katoa kei te pukapua te taone nei o kumaunga. So the mountains in this region are what I consider my mountains. A o ngā awa, tatua kei ki te uh, wai o mata, o te mata, uh, wai te mata hawa. I was around about 28 before I even learnt any te reo. When we went to the Kohanga Reo, the, the tutor just said, Oh, ten, ten apena, me hoki koutou ki reira. You need to reconnect with your people. Then I came across mixed martial arts. And the reason why I do it is because there's not too many things in day-to-day -day society that give you that sense of cherish your life. And I like that because it makes me feel closer to my ancestors and appreciate that they live their day-to-day -day lives, having to be aware of the environment, fighting, you know, pakanga sometimes, so that's important. You'll, you'll get used to seeing the body language. You'll, you'll get used to the little things you have to see to understand, oh, yeah, this guy's kicking low. Later on, as your guy's career blossom and you become UFC fighters, you will understand that their job is to pretend like a low kicks, I like a high kick's going low, and you can't tell the difference. So you've just got to kind of block both sometimes, yeah? I haven't seen much fighting before, and in fact, I would do things to avoid watching it. <laughs> and I thought even just boxing is pretty brutal, but it's been really interesting to see, okay, it's a lot more technical than I thought, and I think you have come to appreciate the skill that goes into these things. But confession, I still haven't watched anything because I'm too scared. <laughs> I prefer to use the front leg. There are people that don't. For when you kick me with this leg, they use this one. And when you kick me with that leg, they use that one. Yeah, when I came in, I knew that there was going to be a fight at the end. And that's what I've been telling all my friends that I'm doing. <laughs> so working towards that is the goal. My friends have been actually really supportive, which has been really cool. They're not into fighting, they haven't seen much about it, except for a few male friends who have been like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm bulking out, man. <laughs> Sketching my breath. Yeah, good, going good. I'm definitely getting leaner. The missus thinks I'm getting leaner too, but... I started on 77 kilos. My scales at home, I was 73.7. Yesterday I got on the scales, didn't hear us with a belly full of water, 76. Eugene gave me that look, you know, like. With the stuff you learn on Wim to Warrior, coaches are drilling it into us about being technical, you know. You think, oh, I've been watching for years, I, I understand what they're doing. And you realise that you actually don't. You're trying to escape and you can't, and you're like, why can't I escape? And it's just because your foot is five inches, six inches in the wrong place. And that's the difference between getting somebody off you or just being pinned on the ground, gasping for air, you know? Especially with the bigger boys. There's some 130 kg boys in there. And when they're lying on top of you, you know they're lying on top of you, you know? Awesome work, guys. Awesome work. We'll do our little photo after this. It's quite noticeable how much they've progressed. Yeah, ready? Three, two, one. They've definitely trimmed up. Most of these people probably don't work out every day, and it's probably sporadic at best. Now most of these people are five days a week working hard, and it's going to continue like that. When you do that, you're going to get results. You're going to get some changes.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.